Welcome, this is Terry Ewell. Study number 50 presents many challenges and opportunities. The virtuosic riffs of scales and arpeggios need to be practiced for smooth fingerings and accurate timing. I prefer to shape the scales by lingering a bit more at the bottom and then moving the scale forward at the top. In slow motion, it sounds like this. The breaths given in lines 1 and 2 and in the last line are quick catch breaths. Don't make too much space in the music. Many of my students have trouble counting out correctly the first measure of line 2. Be certain to hold the quarter note out for the duration of two eighth notes. The two triplets are notated in a confusing manner. These six notes need to take place in the span of a single eighth note. Let me play the last measure of the first line and this measure with the metronome. The study presents E5 or high E. Similar to E flat 5, this is a difficult note to perform on the German system bassoon. Here are my favorite fingerings for the note without using an E key. Some bassoons, such as the one I'm now playing, have an E key. My E key is in an offset position, which I really like. This allows for opening the E key with either my first or second finger. This is a wonderful key placement for the solo in the first movement of the Ravel Piano Concerto in G major. Here's my normal high E fingering. I will show the fingering in the chart with the normal position of the E key, not offset. Many performers make use of a special vocal for high notes. Sometimes a very cheap vocal works well for this. Other vocals are manufactured to increase the ease of performing high notes. For instance, years ago I purchased an all good vocal that I used during my student days for high notes. It was a great help for these high notes. Now I use another vocal for the high register, E5 or higher. Bassoonists have discovered that drilling a very small hole using a 164 drill, that is a half an inch from the tip of the vocal, greatly helps with the response of notes in the high register. However, if the hole is left open, the lower registers of the instrument suffer. A piece of tape or tubing over the hole is needed when it is not used for high notes. However, there is even a more ingenious solution. Arthur Grossman and a student developed an articulation mechanism that opens the vent when the D key is depressed. I use this vocal when I perform works in the extreme high register on the bassoon. The vocal also reminds me of the wonderful instruction and mentorship I received from Arthur Grossman. I made mention of my teachers who have contributed ideas in the other videos. However, Arthur Grossman is mentioned only in video number 15, BDP number 123. This is not because he didn't have a great influence on my bassoon playing, but rather because my teaching and understanding of the instrument was so formed by his instruction that it is impossible for me to separate his instruction from my own. I owe so much to him that his name would need to be constantly mentioned. 
An alternative method is to reset your embouchure before each high E and put your teeth lightly on the reed. You will need to experiment with where the teeth are placed on the reed. Generally, they will be a few millimeters away from the collar of the reed. Here is the fingering that is most often used for this technique. Using your teeth on the reed and this fingering for producing the high E actually works quite well for the end of the Tonsman sonatine. It also works fine for the E5s in line 7 and at the end of the study. However, if you have a chromatic approach to high E or slur into it without a big leap, this method doesn't work well. For instance, use the other fingerings for E5s in lines 5 and 6 or the high E at the end of the Saint-Saëns Sonata second movement. I find that the highest notes on the bassoon, such as C-sharp 5, D5, E-flat 5, and E5, require several fingerings. I choose the one that works best for the situation. In this study, however, I just use my standard high E fingering. The successful performance of study number 50 depends in large part on embouchure placement. In line 7, Weisenborn presents some of the greatest embouchure challenges you will be confronted with in bassoon literature. Large leaps on the bassoon are best accomplished by setting the teeth parallel with each other. In other words, I move my lower jaw forward slightly so that my lower teeth and lips are even on the reed with my upper teeth and lips. For instance, for the two E5s in lines 5 and 6, I need to set my parallel embouchure in position prior to the notes that lead to the high E5s. Position 1A in the figure best presents the embouchure that I use. I realize that this sacrifices the normal sound for the other notes, but I compensate for it with vowel placement and embouchure looseness. Now immediately after E5 in line 7, I set my embouchure for a more muted timbre. Embouchure position 2C best represents this embouchure position. I love this section because I can now express such a different mood. Thus in the second measure of line 7, I pull the reed out of my mouth thereby obtaining a darker and tenderer sound. I can do this throughout the whole piano section to provide as great a contrast as possible. For the rest of the study, which is in a bravura style, I have slightly more reed in my mouth than my normal embouchure position. This provides a more vibrant and forte sound. Embouchure position 2A best approximates that embouchure position. Previously, I addressed differences in embouchure in study number 34, BDP number 142. Please look at this if you have not viewed that video.